Welcome to the proning procedure. We're going to cover the pre-procedure preparations. The first thing that we should do prior to moving a prone patient, we should consult with the Lifeline Medical Director and Sean will go over some things that we should be discussing with the Medical Director. So it's very important um, that if we are considering transporting a patient in a prone position, that before we do that, we contact our uh, medical director and pre-plan a few things and also um, uh, really get the decision made from the medical director whether we're going to transport prone or not. Uh, sometimes you might come into a facility and the patient's already prone, or you may come uh, and the patient's not prone, but you think the patient would benefit from being prone. So those are the two questions that we need to ask. If the patient is already prone, do we need a, the patient to continue to be prone for transport, or will the patient tolerate supination? And then if the patient's not prone already, is this a patient that would benefit from being prone? And this is really a decision that the medical director needs to make and help you talk through. Um, the other thing that you need to make sure you get a really good plan for um, is uh, contingency planning for airway management and what you're going to do um, if you uh, get into a situation where you have to manage the airway. The other thing is uh, hemodynamic management and, and what are you going to do, how are you going to manage the patient if they become hemodynamically unstable. And then the third thing and probably one of the most important things is to discuss your sedation plan and your paralytic plan. And these patients, if you're transporting prone, you really should be um, paralyzing the patient, which means they also have to be very well sedated. So to make sure you have all those things in place during your consult is what you're going to need to do. Now what we're going to demonstrate, we're going to apply the air pal pad and position so that the top of the pad will be positioned approximately at the patient's shoulders. This will be utilized to facilitate a smooth transfer at the receiving facility. Sean and Bridget will position the pad and go over exactly what they're doing. So in this uh, case, I'm standing at the head right here and uh, Bridget is at the foot. And we are going to position this pad so that it's down a little bit because this patient is going to be prone in the prone position. So we don't want the pad underneath the face. We actually want it right under its shoulders. So when we inflate it, the face comes up off the mattress. So we're going to position that down just a little bit. And then we're going to make sure we tuck all the uh, loose ends. We got all these straps. We don't want these things getting caught in anything. So we're going to tuck all this underneath the mattress. And then one thing to note is we're going to we're going to put this. Um, we're going to use the air pal in both prone to prone uh, proning and when we're proning onto the stretcher. But you're only going to put it on our stretcher when you actually prone onto the um, into onto our mattress. So if you're uh, taking a patient that is already prone, you're going to skip this air pal step and go straight to the uh, sheet. So this this in. All right. So there's our air pal on our stretcher. Now that they've placed the air pal onto the stretcher, they're going to take a sheet and place it onto the stretcher. The sheet will be positioned so that there's extra length off the right side of the stretcher, which should be rolled and tucked under the mattress. So the first thing is we're going to unroll this sheet all the way. A lot, of, a lot of times we have this sheet folded in half, but in this case we want it to be extra long off the sides. So we're going to leave the majority of the length going off the patient's right side of the stretcher here. Uh, if this is the right side of the stretcher, it's, it's all the way down almost to the ground. And then the, le the left side here still has a decent amount of length on it, but much, much shorter. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to roll this length up. And the reason why you want to leave the extra length is actually for an emergency supination. This will give you extra length to be able to basically burrito the patient and roll them over. But you don't, so you want to be able to get that, so you just want to roll it up pretty gently and then just tuck it just slightly underneath the mattress so that you can easily get to it. And then you're going to tuck the other side just like normal. Now our stretcher is ready to go. Oh, it fell out. Now it's ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is get a Z-Flow pillow if available to put under the patient's head. So Bridget here, this is the Z-Flow pillow. This is what we're used to seeing a lot of times in the NCCU and sometimes uh, uh, MICUs. This will really <laughs> provide a real moldable surface that we can get the patient's head in just the right surface. And it's also not fluffy, so it gives you pretty good access to the patient's airway. We're just going to get this ready, and we'll have it ready for us for when we, once we actually um, prone the patient. The other thing we have to get ready is we have to make a blanket roll. So we use two to three um, blankets, and we'll just roll them up, just like the, this, this is demonstrating, and then tape them together. 
um, and have it ready before we go in the room. So those things will be ready for us so that our stretcher is basically ready to go. We're going to lay this uh, roll on the stretcher so that once we put the patient on it, they're going to lay right on that roll. We don't have to move anything. The blanket roll should go from the patient's shoulders to just below the knee. Place on the left side of the stretcher. The roll should be wide enough to lift the patient's shoulder and leave space for the endotracheal tube. Please note that wedges or pillows could be used as a substitute. As Sean stated earlier, you will discuss with the medical director any airway management plan and have equipment available. You will also want to consider the need for defib pad placement and one thing that's very important is that you will huddle prior to movement to discuss any plans on how to move. You should have all this worked out prior to actually executing this movement as to what everyone's role is going to be. Anything to add to that, Sean? Just think a couple steps ahead. So think about where your lines are going to need to be. Think about whether you're going to need defib pads on. Um, may not be that you would have a defib pad on every patient, but you just think you're going to need them. You can at least put the um, anterior pad on, and you can also use that for monitoring um, if, you, if you were to need it. So um, think through those emergency procedures. Make sure you um, um, are all on the same page, page with your team members and talk these things out loud. This concludes the pre-procedure preparation. Thank you.